my good friends you have heard us talking about you make money when you are buying and if that is you you're always wondering how can you make money when you're buying a property uh, I just want us to walk through on this particular deal and to see whether we can actually make some money as we are buying the property my good friends this is a property that was on the market or is on the market uh, and in today's video, I'm just going to walk through the problem. This video that we are doing is a series. A series just basically means that we're going to walk through um, this particular deal in a number of videos. There might be three or four of those videos and uh, we'll go through them over the next couple of Saturdays. Uh, but today's video, we are going to look at the biggest, I think this is the one deal that it came onto my table maybe about two years ago and uh, within this two years ago um, I didn't look at it and then it went away and recently it has also come back and there is many problems on this particular deal but because I'm a seasoned investor I understand how property works I've looked at it and this person came through we're just going to call this person the person who's selling this property uh, Tabo and uh, I'm going to give you the context of the property and over and above that I am going to show you what the property looks like and then I'm going to show you what what I am seeing is opportunity in this property and at the end of the video you my friends together and my uh, and myself uh, you are going to give us comments in the uh, comment section uh, and you can tell us whether this is a good deal or it's not is it something that you would go for and what are the things what are the pitfalls that you are seeing so this particular video is not just you know me sharing with you stuff hey this is what we're doing or this is a good deal to do uh, but it's an engaging video in terms of what you can see in this property as well uh, and uh, hopefully together we can then learn because this is it's like a case study but it's a real life case study as we go through this deal now this property that I'm talking about it's a good property investment in my view uh, I think that uh, the investor that bought it they bought it with the good intentions but over the years life has just happened and for that reason a lot of things have gone wrong and now they are wanting to sell and they came through to me as a TJ please sell this deal to me uh, and uh, I thought maybe let's do an assessment between uh, me and you to see whether this is a good deal or not. Uh, let me give you context on the property. The context is that uh, this property at the moment is fully funded with a local bank. They, um, there's a bank that is involved. They have given a loan on this property. The second part of it is that... Um, the investor that owns this property uh, they have other properties elsewhere but this property also they own it in one company uh, so it's just one company that they own one company this property is in a company and what they are trying to do now is to dispose of that company together with the property does that make sense that's context there this property uh, apparently it can do 19 students I've been to the property myself I'm going to show you the walkthrough of the video and apparently it can do 19 students one nine whilst I was at the property I indicated I, I saw potential of around about 22 students um, but uh, that's the potential that I'm seeing with changing a couple of things on the property uh, but apparently it can do 19 students it is 500 meters away from the university literally 500 meters I took the walk myself from this university uh, to where this property is now Tabo the seller is not one person he is a partner in this business and the two of them they are I just I want to say Tabo is on the fence in terms of selling but the other partner let's just call him James James wants to sell so James is saying hey I want out right and uh, just give me what's what's worth and I am gone 
and that's what James wants. So let's not focus a lot around James because James is wanting out. And uh, we are going to focus on Tabo because Tabo is saying that he he might put, if he gets the right partner, he might stay. Uh, but because of James, he's now wanting to sell. This is a predicament in a partnership. Uh, so they are wanting to do the right thing, which is just to sell the business and move on or just sell the property. And within that, uh, this is the context of the deal. Now that we've got the context of the deal, I think maybe let's jump on to onto the video and see um, uh, half of half of what the walkthrough. I did a walkthrough, so I'm going to walk through the entire property. So let's do 50% of it, and then I'll come back and tell you some of the problems that I'm seeing. All right, uh, and then thereafter I can then close off by telling you some of the opportunities that I'm seeing. And then you can then give us an indication of, is this a good deal, is it not? Should we do it? What are some of the other things that I might have not missed, that, that I might have missed and you have been able to see? Uh, and uh, potentially together we can learn. And by the way, my good friends, uh, this is the TJ Tribe. And if you have never subscribed here, this is what we do on a Saturday. And um, it's a learning opportunity for us, but we are learning with real life deals that we are doing and we keep each other engaged in the engagement process we are both learning all right we are both learning uh, so let's jump on on to the walkthrough and uh, let me see you just now all right welcome this is the property a student race a student race that we spoke about and uh, we're going to jump in into the house and whilst I am looking in this house, I'm already going to give some of the tips uh, to say what we need to fix here. You can see that a bit of painting is required here, like throughout, as you can see. Uh, the place looks all right, but definitely a bit of painting. Look at the gate there. Some maintenance is needed. Uh, it's summer now, the garden needs a little bit of some attention and uh, a little bit of paving could have been much better here than this rubble. It's a little bit more presentable and more aesthetically pleasing and uh, look at that water that's dripping. That's money right there for the investor. That's money that you're seeing there dripping so how best can you solve that okay all right as we go here this is the outside of it okay there we go and then it takes gas all right and then outside there you go this way the dustbins been collected and that's another room there all right and look at what the neighbor is doing what some work you can see there they're getting prepared for 20 i don't know 2025 2024 but here it is here the back of this you can see it's a bit of uh, work painting that is needed on this place definitely a bit of maintenance clearing off it's like what is this stuff doing here right lots of pots and pans just give it away to the needy uh, and right there in the back now is a swimming pool what's supposed to be a swimming pool and uh, it is like a fraught yeah as my friends would say my africana friends say this is like a fraught this is meant to be a braai and uh, this is the back of the house. So you can see the house stretches from the left hand side, goes through all the way to the right hand side. There's an add on there you can see and a swimming pool that needs some attention. Probably the mortar is the one that's gone here but you can see some of the things are here. Uh, so maintenance 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 you don't make money by buying properties you make money in the maintenance part piece of it okay 
And uh, this is where you can lose money or make money. And as we look at the back of the property, right, they're connected to some DSTV there. They got some geezer outside. And uh, it's another Bryston there. Awesome stuff. Now we're going to go into the, into the house. And this is the outside. Anybody know what trees is this called? It's called yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever. Yeah, smells good. All right, as we go in. We definitely need a new washing line. All right. So we'll go in, need to paint the door here. Okay, as we go inside. So this is the kitchen. Uh, kitchen looks good. But you can see there's a little bit of painting that is needed. And uh, a decent color is needed actually. So you can see there's a bit of nice cleaning that needs to be done whilst the students are not here and the kitchen so this is a bit of tiles that were supposed to be done here the project was left halfway through so we can finish it up there's the gas stoves in a nicely secluded place which is beautiful that's good and the chefs of the house can then be able to cook in there so that's the kitchen moving in into the house I'm just going to call this the first entrance or the on the first room. There's plenty of them here. So this is bedroom number one. There was a student who just left and I was asking, are you leaving the blankie in there? And then they said, yeah, they don't need it anymore. And I'm like, flip. I'm a parent. This is money already that they are leaving behind. If my child is going to do this, I'm going to be upset. But anyway, I'm not, I might not even know, isn't And this is bedroom number one. Okay? And it's a single. And then we come through here in a foyer, sort of like. This is where the kids hang out. And uh, they watch telly. On this side here is a freezer. Uh, so multi-purpose room. And as we go outside, that one... That door there is, is a screen. The screen protects obviously from outside. It's never really opened. And this is door number, we're just gonna call it door number two. Though you can see it's 13, but in terms of our viewing now, you can see it's door, door number two. It's also a single. And um, this is the main entrance as you would have seen it at the beginning of the main entrance. So now we are on to door number two. And this is door number three in a little bit of uh, right. So door number three, door number four, which is next door to it. And again, a little bit of painting. Door number next door. Okay, right. And there is the next door. This is now six, and this is now seven. Okay, I'm gonna jump into seven. As prescribed, it's just enough. So you have your space for the bed, and there you are, you've got your table. They can put whatever that they want to put in there. And there is some space. And within this space here, they are putting in all of the stuff that needs to be put. So it's door number seven, another single, door number eight. And on door number eight, but this one here is a double. And because it's rainy season, there is a little bit of licking that has happened. And this has started off right at the beginning now. So this season, and we can see there. So door number seven it was, and door number nine, coming through to this one. So the rooms are all fairly the same, 
and door number 10. And this takes us out to an exit, which takes us into the swimming pool where we were earlier on. However, we're coming back now and this is a toilet. So within this toilet, uh, told that it got blocked yesterday, but when it got blocked, uh, they realized the flush is not working. So the flush itself needs to be fixed. And there is space to put in a shower in here uh, to optimize, as you can see here, there's enough space to put in a shower. There is uh, painting that needs to be done here. You can see that the painting was left uh, finished with the previous guys that were doing this project. And there is another toilet next door. Uh, you can see here there is no space for a shower. And again, as a landlord, you can see that water is leaking and that's money doing, going down the drain. When you hear people saying money is going down the drain, that's what it means right there. Okay, and then this is also another toilet, uh, but now it's just being utilized as a, um, as a store, right? So surely we can find a better place to put all of this stuff somewhere nicely so that we can utilize this toilet to what it's supposed to be. And uh, as I go back here to the first rows, there's more bathrooms here. Uh, this is toilet number one. And you can see there. And uh, there is another shower. And there you are with a shared sink in between. And they just close their doors right there. And that door is closed. So two showers, two toilets so far. And some maintenance is needed on this side of the fence. Uh, no shower. Uh, just the shower head that is needed. That's like what, 100 Rand? We need to put it in there. And a missing sink. So we need to put in a sink there, obviously if you're wanting to increase that. Okay, there you are. All right, so now we are going back to where we came from and taking you back into the house. On the left-hand side is another room, which is 11, a single, a 12, a single. Uh, which one did we go into? 13, which is a single, this one is opened, nobody here, let's see, okay, there's some space where they can put in whatever that they want to do, and there's some cupboard space for them, oh, Blanky is a big thing here, they leave Blankies all over the place, I love these kids, all right, and then we go back here, and this is just their room the way it looks like nice and impact and uh, we go out so this is single so this is what the, most of the singles look like and we are now going back now into the other side of the house there's another room uh, there is we have no access room there and this is solar welcome to solar you can't have this without solar uh, it could have been done better but it is what it is. So this is where it is at the moment. And the ceiling needs to be patched. So, you know, it's a little bit open there. There's a door that is needed there, a ceiling door. And as you go in into this room here, this is a very spacious room. I would almost think that we can make it as a double on this room here. I would almost think that. Um, but maybe not. Maybe a single is good. All right. The student who was in here, they just finished off and they left two days ago. And there's another room in here. And uh, there is the master's room, which is also being a share. It's got its own bathing room. And in here is a shared bathing room, shared toilet. It's a shared toilet that you can see. You can see that's the old, old structure because you can see the tiling here is beautiful. And on this side here is a shared 
but which almost looks like nobody uses. I always say to people, when you're doing student accommodation, nobody uses the, shower, the bath. Uh, and there you are, again, water going underneath there into the drain. And there is a shower, and there's a beautiful shower there. Amazing stuff. So this is the house. There a bit of space that can be utilized for something, maybe a couple space. I would have taken, you remember that storeroom that we saw there that is a toilet? I would literally put it here. This is the space that I'll put it. I'll put a door here and then I'll close it and make it my storeroom. And then there's another room here. Bingo. This is it, my friends. And um, yeah, what it is. It's a good property out here. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm sure you have been uh, seeing all of that property and you saw that swimming pool, right? It is dirty. It is dirty. Full of water. Uh, you saw the plants growing out of the, um, uh, is it the garters. So there's lots of problems here. The question is, is it a good deal? Is it not? But before we jump on to those questions, let me give you some of the problems that I have personally observed on here on this particular deal. The first one is obviously the partners are not in sync. Do I want to get involved or should anybody else get involved with Tabo as an opportunity? Uh, so I'm seeing the relationship there is one thing, the dilemma that we need to fix. Um, and um, if I'm to buy it, I don't need to get involved with Tabo. Uh, so is that an opportunity or is that a risk? I don't know. You, you need to think about that. But the bottom line is that uh, there is this partnership and uh, it could be a risk or it might be an opportun uh, uh, opportunity for someone else. This, uh, that was the first thing. The second thing is that uh, even though there is a local bank that has funded them, uh, they are eight months behind. Whew. Yeah. Eight months behind the bond payment. So the bank has been collecting, calling them, when are you going to make a payment, all of those things. Um, and uh, potentially at the moment, that property is already... So normally what happens at the bank, right? Um, you understand, uh, many of you who know me on this channel, you know that I was a banker before. So I understand the bank processes very well. Uh, so, you know, when you don't make your first payment of the bond, uh, you know, they're just going to send you an email, that kind of thing. And then, you know, three months, they start calling you hard. Uh, and then they send it into collections. They send someone to, your, to the property for evaluation. And then, bingo, somewhere between three to six months, it's handed over. They call it handing over, right? And uh, you get attorneys now calling you um, for you to pay. Uh, but these guys, they are eight months. They haven't paid nothing for eight months. Why haven't they paid nothing for eight months? Apparently... Um, the two people, they got into this deal, uh, and when the money came through from the university the last time, uh, they needed the money in their personal capacities to sort out some of their loans. Uh, so it sounded like they might have been overextended. Uh, so they used that money and that money should have been able to carry them. And, uh, at this time of the moment, the university also hasn't paid them. Uh, so obviously that's how they've managed to get to eight months behind. Whew! Yeah! Eight months, that's a risk. Some of you are ready. I'm checking out, right? Hold on, Jimmy. This might be an opportunity. Uh, I'm on the fence on this one, and that's why I thought let's do a video so that we can all learn and see what we can do with it. Maybe it's an opportunity or not. I should have actually talked about maybe the eight months behind right at the end because maybe of you are already checked out. But anyway, guys, this is an average 10,000, 10,000, 15,000 repayment bond. Uh, so it's not a lot of money times eight. Uh, that's what may be the opportune. If you think that's an opportune, you could easily uh, pay that off uh, or when you're buying, that problem is not your problem. Uh, so there is multiple ways of looking at this. And um, the other thing now we need to talk about is number three, 
it's obvious on the video you saw the maintenance has left the building uh, the property has been run down uh, there's lots of things that are, are wrong there I, that I mentioned you know the swimming pool that was like an obvious thing um, you can't have students on a swimming pool like that it just doesn't make sense but anyways these are the things that happen in and around us so it is what it is the other thing that you saw is that there is a small gas like a nine kilo gas and um, I don't know uh, how many people uh, if, if any of you are using gas in your place uh, so for instance at my house we use a gas uh, we use gas to cook at my house and uh, a 9 kg literally takes us around about three months or so uh, but within those three months it's two adults and two kids right so we're not consuming a lot uh, and we also try to do you know prying over the weekend going out so we're not cooking every day but here is a 9 kg and you are bringing in 19 students how long is that gas is going to be taking i think every week you're buying gas uh, is that something that could be done is there something that can be done it's a small gas i think that's a problem there the other problem it's, it's a small problem right it's a small problem compared to eight months behind yeah right yeah I, I agree with you but i'm just pointing out all the problems that i saw and i want us to think about it because i think the gas here for you to move from a small gas tank to a big gas tank it's an investment so that's why i'm highlighting as a problem the next point i don't know what number am i now uh, let's just call it the next number you know me with numbers um i can't keep track of the numbers all right yeah so we spoke about the gas the next one is that when i was on the property i was only able to see eight students i've done my due diligence i've asked for contracts I have asked the caretaker how many students are here and I keep getting around eight. So I'm not seeing more than eight. So there's a big problem here. So what about the other 11? Where are they? Um, is it occupied? Is it not? And uh, this landlord, Tabo, hasn't been to this property in the last seven months. Uh, he's also not so sure the caretaker is kind of like running it keeping it afloat uh, so I'm not getting enough information from you know other people as well now then the other point is that the zoning is wrong uh, so for you who understand zoning or maybe you don't understand what is zoning basically one dwelling is zone one when we are talking about student accommodation you need to have either a zone three or four depending on the council and they need to give you consent to run a student accommodation there and basically that's how you can have more living space uh, and the town planner is a guy who can allow you to do that and if you've been here for a while we actually have a segment or should i say a playlist where we speak about town planning and uh, my brother from another mother dumisani uh, he is the town planner that we work with here, uh, but you can find your own town planner in your area to uh, give you direction around zoning. What does it mean? And uh, do you need it for your property? Uh, and how much will it cost? But for this particular property that we're talking about, my good friends, there is no zoning. It's a residential one, but the place looks like it can easily be a zone three or zone four because there's many you saw there's many rooms uh, that are freestanding there so uh, the zoning is not right there it's a huge problem it can take us a, a minimum of a year a maximum of two years to rectify so who yeah yeah the next problem that i'm seeing here is that these eight students that we are talking about the property is actually um, uh, rendering a service to the university, but the accreditation is not in place. Uh, so it's in a gray area at the moment, whether the place has been accredited or not. Uh, the paper is suggesting that there might have been an application and it hasn't been approved. So the, it's a gray area, but the bottom line is according to this financial year, this place hasn't been accredited. That's the bottom line right 
Uh, so we can justify and say, hey, there is an application, we're waiting an application. But the bottom line is that today, if you had to buy this property today, there ain't no accreditation. So it's a big risk there if you're wanting to provide accommodation to students that are accredited under the bursary space. And many of us, we are, uh, that's where we are playing in because we understand that the, uh, this particular uh, bursaries, it could be a higher paying client than most clients would be paying at this junction uh, at the time of making this video. Uh, the next point is that the risk that I'm also seeing here, which is another problem, is that the one partner has checked out, right? So the one partner has checked out and, you know, when you're buying something like that, you probably want to just buy it outright. But there, is there an opportunity maybe to partner up? I don't know. But the problem is that the partner, the one partner, James, has, part, has checked out, but also Tabo has checked out. Uh, Tabo hasn't been to his property for seven months, right? Uh, so they've checked out as well, uh, mentally or emotionally, uh, whichever way you want to look at it, I think that the partner has checked out. Life in the investment space have taken a toll. And uh, I want to reinforce that, you know, people speak about mental health out there uh, in business. It's something that we need to take seriously. Uh, as people that do business and um, uh, you're consumed with all of these things. So they have checked out and um, obviously that's why they're selling. That's why they're selling, right? Uh, so the other, the other thing that I'm also seeing here as a, as a problem is that the current plans that are certified or approved by the council, it's not what is on the property. Ooh, yes. That's what I saw. So I looked at the plan. I was given the plans with the seller. I did a walkthrough on the property. I said, wait, this section here, I don't see it. Where is it on the plan? So do you have another version of plans? And they said, no, this is the only plans that I've got. I said, okay, great. Did you update anything on this property? Did you build anything on this property? They said, no, I didn't build. I'm like, oh, Lord. It basically means that when Tabo bought the property, the previous seller, they probably did alterations on the property, didn't do the update on the plans, and bingo, it has gone through like that. But now the rules say, or should I say the bylaws of many of our councils say that if you are found in this problem, it is you, the current landlord, the current owner, it is your problem. You need to fix that problem. Uh, so the plans is a huge problem. Problem, uh, so that is what needs to be fixed. And that also, I think all of these problems that I'm talking about, they all have financial implication. And that's why I wanted to highlight all of them. So plans is one thing. The other part is, as I walked through the house, I was not comfortable with the electrical, uh, the electrical, wiring of the building um there were wires that were out here and there uh, so i am not impressed with the electrical and um i think it's something that that is also a risk uh, i walked through the property as you did see uh, i saw what used to be an electrical fence and it's cut off there some some places it exists but the electrical fence is not connected, you know. Electrical fence is, you know, the small little lines that runs throughout the whole house. Uh, so you got a patch here, got another patch here. It's just gonna... So there is no electrical fence. And if you are providing housing, you want to have electrical fence so that you can protect the kids. It's another risk that I'm seeing here. Some of you have checked out like your teacher, you know, this. Yeah, yeah. But you make money when you're buying properties. So our job as property investors, uh, property entrepreneurs, is not also just to buy, but is to solve some of these problems. And um, maybe the questions that we want to ask ourselves is that, do you have the kahunas uh, to solve for these problems? Do you have the tenacity? Do you have the knowledge? Do you think you got the zest? You can put on your punching gloves and say, yeah, I'm gonna take on this problem 
and uh, I can turn around this business. Is that you? And if it is here, it is you in the comments, let me know. TJ, this is a good property. Let's do it. I'm not saying let's do it together. I'm just saying with what you're seeing here, the problems here, can this problem be solved? Is that something that you do or you're just going to walk away? By the way, I did say that this video is a three to four part series. And today we are focusing on the problems of this particular pro uh, property. I've given you the context of what it is. And now I'm giving you the list of all the problems that I am seeing uh, with the due diligence that we have done. And I'm going to uh, give you just now the opportunity in this property. And we'll end it there. And then we can, in the comments, engage to see whether it's a good opportunity or not. Uh, and what are some of the things that you'd think I should also include in the due diligence uh, before we go ahead and buy this property. The last one that I want to speak about is the furniture is old. Uh, I think that the it's almost non-existent. Uh, there's... Uh, the washing machine is not working, the fridge wasn't working, the gas stove, the, the, not all the plates are working, the beds, I kind of like jammed on into one of them, and like I sank inside, I'm like, poof, I'm not even that heavy. Uh, imagine if you were, you know, that other, you know, voluptuous space people, and you jump in there, yo, I don't know what would have happened in there. Uh, but the bottom line is that the furniture needs to be looked into. It's one of my least problems. What would have been one of my bigger problems? With all these problems that we've spoken about, what are some of the big problems that I would like to focus in? Uh, number one, it is obviously the bank with the non-payment of eight months. That's worrisome. Uh, that is going to keep me awake until I get a resolution on that. But if you are buying that out outright, uh, there's no problem there. The second one is the zoning. That will also worry me because that plays a huge part in compliance. Uh, the third one is the plans, uh, and uh, the the fourth one would have been the electrical. So those are my four huge ones. The rest, I think I can manage as I go along. Uh, if I'm to buy this property, and if you are seeing this as a good opportunity, let me know in the comments. Actually, let's just have a discussion around this property. Whatever discussion that you are thinking of, let's have that discussion in this property. Uh, that's what we are asking for. And uh, you're most welcome to add in a comment. Uh, and you're also welcome to answer other people's comments. Right? Okay? Let's do that. Then, what are the opportunities that I'm seeing here? Drum roll. Opportunities. Bing, bing. Uh, who was it who said opportunity are everywhere? They come, they come wearing an overall. Uh, Zig Ziglar? Is it Brian Tracy or one of those? Ah, anyway, one of them. They said that um, opportunities always come in the form of work, basically, right? And uh, this is the work that we are talking about. Let's jump on to the opportunities. I see five opportunities in here. Uh, and I think that when you are turning around anything, whether it's a property or a business, you need to be seeing the opportunity already up front. And I'm seeing five opportunity uh, that I'm going to be talking about here. Uh, maybe you can also add in some other opportunities in the comments below. The first one that I'm seeing here is the proximity of the property. Woo! Woo! High five! High five! Woo! High five! High five! The proximity is mwah, 500 meters. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, my friends. 500 meters! I think it's a good opportunity. But, but... Is 500 meters the proximity outweighs all these other problems? I don't know, right? What's the other opportunity that I'm seeing? The structure of the property is sound, right? I walked through the properties. I didn't see any huge cracks. Um, I walked through, I didn't jump onto the ceiling, but we're going to get our guy who does uh, these checks. There was one or two leakages on the roof. Uh, we could see it. You saw it in the video. You could see it. But um, it's nothing huge concerning. The alterations that was done, uh, I think 
it was done professionally, though it was not done on the plans, but I think it was done professionally. So the structure is sound from a layman uh, terms. I still need to bring in my structural engineer and say, brother, have a look on this thing. And Dumisan is my one man stop. And he will tell me this good, this is structurally sound or not. Okay, but at the moment, I think it's structurally sound. You saw it for yourself, right? The third one is that there is a bank already that's funding this. So, I might not need, it's an opportune opportunity. I could explore that a little bit further. I can go to the bank and maybe write some nice report and say this is what I'm going to do. And I uh, turn around, I'm the new manager, I just bought it. And see, maybe they might bite or they might not bite. Uh, but a guy like me, with what I have done with my profile as a seasoned investor, as someone who's playing in the real estate space, and I can provide and prove that I've done this, I think the bank can give me a leeway on this eight months. Maybe they might say, hey, give us 50% of this and we'll, we will write off the other or maybe we'll capitalize the other. I don't know what the banks will say, but I am saying that it's an opportunity I can explore, right? It's an opportunity I can explore. Even the sounding of the structure being its sound, I can explore. It's an opportunity. I think I can explore it, right? Um, speaking of the structure, I'm going back to point number two. There is 22 uh, students. Uh, without building, without doing anything, I think that I can get to 22 from 19, right? So I think it's an opportune, uh, it's an opportunity there. It's an opportune time to explore the opportunity. Hey, the English was not English, isn't there? But, but I got it. Number four, opportunity number four. Because I am a seasoned investor, I am knowledgeable, I went to school, I am doing deals all the time, I have the experience, I can utilize all of this into this deal to make it work. So it's my personalized opportunity that I can explore in. I've got a good network, so I can explore all of that to come and help me solution this. Right? What are the opportunities? We're just talking about opportunities here. Yeah. Then the last one is that the property is in a good area for student accommodation. Everywhere you look, there's student accommodation. Like everywhere you look, there's student accommodation. So my good friends, as we land the plane, is this a good opportunity or not? In the comments, let's have the discussion. Um... And maybe just take other people and say, hey, let's have this discussion. There's this cat called TJ. He's talking about this deal. Is it a good opportunity? Is it not? If it were you and you're going to take on the project. So I don't want you to just type in, yeah, it's a good opportunity. What are you going to do? Right? With the information that we have at hand. Because this is the information that we have at hand. And now we're wanting to press go. Bearing in mind, uh, at roundabout... 2 million, we can get this property at around about 2 million. And at uh, 22 students, that is 22 students times 4,500. No, this property is not in a metro. It is in a non-metro. So non-metro is 4,100. So this property is on 22,000 times uh, 4,100 and is it a good deal or not? Don't look at the finances only. Look at the risk associated. Let's look at the context. And let's look at the opportunities. What would you do? Right? What would you do? Give us in the comments what your thinking is. And we can take it from there. My good friends, this is remember. Video 1 of... It's a series, ne? so there's going to be a part two of this video, a part three, a part four. And you, my friends, we are going to be working on this journey together. And on Saturday nights, this year is what we are doing. Discussing them deals, going deeper into the deals. And uh, we can see how best we can do these deals together. It is I, your boy, TJ. We will check you out on the next 
video right here in the TJ tribe. Let us know in the comments. Ne? And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. So that you can learn like this. Real life tips. You know? Okay. I'm out. Cheers.